In this uh, clip, we want to use Stokes' theorem to calculate a line integral in three-dimensional uh, space. So here's the, it's going to be just an example. Here's the example. Um, find the integral over the closed curve gamma of y squared dx plus z squared dy plus x squared dz, where gamma is the closed curve um, A, B, C, and back to A, and a is the point 1, 0, 0. B is the point 0, 0, 1. And C is the point 0, 1, 0. So when you see something like this, you should recognize that this is a line integral. It's of the form PDX plus QDY plus RDZ. It was one of those notation sort of forms that we had written. So basically it's f dot dr, but explicitly written where you see the components of f. So hidden here is the, is the three-dimensional field. So f, maybe let's take a new board. So f here, f of x, y, z, is the field uh, y squared, z squared, x squared, this is p, this is q, and this is r. So c can everybody read through the notation and understand what we're dealing with here? So this is the field, and let's find out what the curve is. So here's our x, y, z coordinate system, and the uh, points we were given were A was 1, 0, 0, so this would be the point A, A, 1, 0, 0. B is the point 0, 0, 1, so 0, 0, 1 would be on the z-axis, so this is B, 0, 0, 1, and the point C is 0, 1, 0, so that would be on the y-axis, so this is C, 0, 1, 0, and the curve is this piecewise smooth triangle going from A to B to C and back to A. So A to B, and then to C, and then back to A. So this is our curve gamma. Good? And we want to calculate the line integral of this field over this curve. The work done by a force given by this uh, F uh, in moving a little bead from A to B to C and back to A, for example. Everybody good? Okay, so we want to calculate the integral over gamma of F dot dr. And we want to do it using Stokes' theorem. So how would we do it using Stokes' theorem? Stokes' theorem said, if you have a piecewise smooth uh, curve, positively oriented with respect to some surface for which it is the boundary, then you can calculate, instead of the line integral over the curve, you can calculate the surface integral over the surface for which gamma is the boundary, not of the curve itself, but rather the curl. Sorry, not of the field itself, but rather the curl. This was Stokes. Everybody remember that? So we're going to need to find what the curl is. That's going to be very easy because this is a very simple sort of field. And we have to decide what is S. What is the surface for which gamma is the boundary? And you can choose many, many 
uh, surfaces for which this gamma is the boundary, but obviously it's better to choose the simplest one for which it's going to be the easiest to calculate the integral. Okay, so the, the obvious choice in this example, and, and sometimes there, there are many choices that all make sense, but in this one it really makes sense to just choose the triangle, the flat triangle in this uh, uh, diagonal plane here. Okay, so our surface S is going to be this thing, just uh, this is going to be our surface S. Okay, and the one thing we have to decide, well, we're, we're going to have to find what this surface is exactly. It's not hard. It's a plane and we know three points that it goes through. So finding the, the equation of the surface is going to be very easy. But we have to decide what is the correct uh, direction of the normal for this surface. And what is it going to be? Remember, we want that gamma, we want gamma to be positively oriented. Meaning that as we walk along gamma, so let's try walking along gamma for a minute. Let's try walking along, get, no, just kidding. So if we walk along gamma, here I am walking along gamma, I want my left hand to point in the direction of the surface. Obviously this is the wrong way. Do you agree? So I can't decide that I'm going to walk this way because I'm given the orientation of gamma. What I can decide is that I'm walking with my head in the other direction that the direction of the normal is not going to be this way, upwards, but rather downwards. Does everybody understand that? Okay. Another way of looking at it, alternatively, take your right hand, when, you, when your fingers trace gamma, your thumb has to point in the direction of the normal. Okay. Whatever, whatever way is easier for you to, to connect to, you can use. Okay. So in any case, the normal is going to have a negative z. It's going to point downwards. Clear, everybody? Okay, so let's do all the calculations. So S is going to be this, and let's emphasize here. Um, okay, we'll, we'll write it in a minute. Okay, so we know what the field is. Let's first find its curl, the rotor. I, J, K the components of the nabla operator, d to dx, d to dy, d to dz, and the components of the field, y squared, z squared, x squared. So what we get, in the i direction, we get the derivative of x squared with respect to y, which is 0, minus the derivative of z squared with respect to z, which is 2z. In the j direction, we get 2x minus 0, but with a mi oh, there was a minus here too, right, minus 2x, and in the k direction we get 0 minus 2y. So this is the rotor, the curl, right? That was easy. Now let's figure out what s is. So s is the plane connecting these three points. You can either use uh, symmetry sort of reasoning to, to decide what it is or to actually find it a plane going three, through three points. We know how to do that, right? We can take two of them as vectors and find uh, the normal ABC. Well, ABC is a bad choice of letters for the normal because that's the name of the points. But you know how to do that, right? So the plane, so let's write um, S is the triangular part of the plane through these three points, which is the plane uh, x plus y plus z equals 1. That's the equation of that plane. Um, and now the, the normal, so let's write with normal so just reading off this equation, x plus y plus z equals 1, the normal, the normal, we can think that the normal is 1, 1, 1. But for the same price, the normal could be 2, 2, 2, or 3, 3, 3, or negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, right? There's a, there's a choice there. 
So we're going to take the normal to be negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. So that uh, gamma is positively oriented with respect to S. OK, so we have now all the data that we need. Now we want to calculate the surface integral instead of the line integral. And by the way, this is not a hard example. You can obviously calculate the line integral uh, itself and find that you get the same answer. This is just an example of using Stokes to transfer from a line integral to a surface integral. So here is the calculation. So the line integral over gamma of f dot dr equals the surface integral over s of the rotor dot ds and now let's plug in all the data so what is the when we calculate a surface integral now now I'm calculating the surface integral so I need the field which in this case is the rotor evaluated on the surface I need a parametrization of the surface dot the normal right and it's going to be a double integral over the domain of the parameters of the surface so what is the the surface, how do I parameterize this surface? So an obvious way to parameterize this surface, let's look back at this board for a second. This surface is just the graph of a function. Do you agree? And uh, the domain of the function is this triangle down here in the xy plane, the triangle here. Do you see that? And the graph itself, the point satisfied that z equals 1 minus x minus y. Do you agree? So x, y are going to belong to the triangle down here. This is always a dilemma. If I add more stuff, will it make it clearer or more blurred? So the, the domain is going to be this triangle down here in the x, y plane. And the graph is the graph of the function z equals 1 minus x minus y. Does everybody agree? OK, so let's write that. So our integral is now over the triangle. Let's draw this to indicate that this is the triangle we're looking at. It's in perspective. Let's draw it like this. Over the triangle in the xy plane, this is d. It's now a double integral over the xy plane. The field, remember this was, the rotor was minus 2z minus 2x, minus 2y. And the parametrization of our surface, the parametrization of our surface is x, y, and z is 1 minus x minus y. It's the graph of a function. So this is r of x, y. This is the parametrization of the surface where x and y belong to d. So this is the parametrization. So this is the parametrization of S. This is the rotor. And this is the normal. So what we need now is the field calculated on the parametrization dot the normal. Right? So the field is minus 2z. So I have minus 2 1 minus x minus y, minus 2x, minus 2y. That's the field calculated on the parametrization. Dot, the normal, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, and then dx, dy. Oh. Minus 2x, minus 2y dot minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 uh, dx dy good clear and now it's just a double integral and in fact things cancel out nicely so let's see what we get so I'm continuing this here all of this was explanations so what do we have here we have 
minus 2, let's rewrite this so we can see it more clearly. This is minus 2 uh, plus 2x plus 2y, and then minus 2x minus 2y. Okay, and now let's start multiplying. So I have this times minus 1, so I have 2 minus 2x minus 2y. Then this times minus 1, so plus 2x. And this times minus 1, so plus 2y. So all the x's and y's cancel out. So in this dot product, all I have left is the double integral over the triangle of 2 dx dy. Did everybody follow that? Good? And what's the double integral over a domain of the function 1 up to a scalar constant? The area of the domain. So it's 2 times the area of this triangle down here. And this triangle is a triangle with sides of length 1. So its area is 1 times 1 times 1 half. So it's 2 times 1 half, which is a neat way of writing 1. Good? Questions? The area that you took at the end was of the domain, not the... Of the domain, of course. Well, once I convert from the surface integral to the double integral, that's it. I'm in the world of a double integral. dx dy, or du dv if your parameterization was different, but in this case the parameterization was just as a graph of a function, xy, fxy. Okay? Yeah? The Ask the second one first. The no, that was the first one. I oh, okay. Well, no. This was just, what, what, what we do when we calculate a surface integral is f dot the normal, okay? If you, if you trace back the way we, we, we reach this in the definition of a surface integral of a, of a vector field, we went through the normalized normal vector, the, the unit normal vector, as an integral of a scalar function, which was um, f dot, that unit normal. That's how we calculated it when we based it on our, on our physical intuitions and, and so forth. Okay, so, so I'm not going to repeat that now, but once you get here, it's just f dot n, but remember you need to calculate f on your parametrization. Now the first question. Can you explain how you got that? How I got what? The, 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 the plane on which s lives? I kind of guessed it. But, but the, the, the straightforward, secure way of doing it is you have three points. Find the plane going through three points. We did that many, many times back in the beginning of the course. One way of doing it is connect these two as a vector, connect these two as a vector, do their uh, cross product, you find the normal vector. And then you have to decide which direction the normal is according to the problem, but that's okay. More questions? Okay, so this is an example of using Stokes' theorem to calculate a line integral via a surface integral of the curl. Okay, the other way of doing, of using Stokes' theorem, if you happen to have a surface integral of a curl, then you can calculate that using a line integral. Okay, that's both ways Stokes go. Okay, so that's the end of this example.